All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are into standard 9C. This is another quick set of notes. Uh, you should be able to describe the evolution of the nature of work and the labor force, including its effects on families, the status of women and children, the slave trade, and the labor union movement. So essential understandings. Agriculture economies were based on the family unit. The Industrial Revolution had a significant impact on the structure and function of the family. The Industrial Revolution placed new demands on the labor of men, women, and children. Workers organized labor unions to fight for improved working conditions and workers' rights. So the factory system. Family-based cottage industries were displaced by the factory system. In the factories, there were harsh working conditions. To increase production, factory owners wanted to keep their machines running as many hours as possible. So on average, a worker in a factory spent 14 hours a day on the job, six days a week. Work did not change with the seasons as it did on the farm. So basically to sum this up, that family-based cottage industries were back when goods were made in home by hand. And then the rise of factories made these family-based cottage industries go away. Factories brought machines. Machines made the goods quickly and cheaply. Um, also, with the working hours, people got one day off a week. Typically, it was Sunday, so they can go to church and spend it with family. And if it snowed outside, Work still went on. People went to work. It did not matter what the weather was like outside. Come hell or high water, people made it into work. If somebody was sick, they still made it to the job because if they did not show up for their job, even if they were sick, they could have lost their job and lost money for their family. So people went into work all the time. Did not matter. The weather did not matter. Conditions did not matter. <laughs> no vacation. They worked all the time. So factories had harsh working conditions. They were not well lit or clean. Machines would injure workers through explosions. So arms, hands, and fingers, they would get caught in machines, etc. There's poor ventilation. Men were competing with women and children for jobs and wages. Women and children cost less for factory owners to employ. Therefore, they were hired more often than men were. Child labor kept costs of production low and the profits high. And owners of mines and factories exercised considerable control over the lives of their laborers. They had no vacation, no sick leave, and if you took leave for whatever reason, more than likely you were out of a job. So labor unions and reform laws. We are going to see unions arise. Unions are voluntary labor associations. They would represent all workers in a particular trade or job. They engaged in collective bargaining negotiations between the laborers, which are the workers, and the management. They would encourage worker-organized strikes to demand increased wages and improved working conditions. And the unions would lobby for laws to improve the lives of workers, which included women and children. So even today, people of a particular trade or job have unions. Truckers have a union that go out there and fight on their behalf for better working conditions, so lower the number of hours that they are to be driving on the roads so they can get more sleep and result in less accidents. Teachers also have unions, so, you know, we feel we should be getting paid more for what we do, and our unions are out there fighting for us to get more money for the jobs that we do. All right, so here are some pictures of labor unions, some things that might look very familiar. So you have women who wear these sashes. Um, that's like their, their picket signs. Um, 
Then we have this labor union sign that say the folks who brought you the weekend, child labor laws, overtime, minimum wage, injury protection, workman's compensation insurance, pension security, and the right to organize. That is what labor unions brought for us. Thank you. Then we have here some more strike signs that you can read over and here men carrying these picket signs. So like this wooden bar and at the top would be a poster of whatever they were um, against. Okay, so some reform laws you need to be familiar with. In 1833, it's going to become illegal to hire children under the age of nine. Kids who are ages 9 through 12 could work no more than 8 hours a day. And kids ages 13 through 17 could work no more than 12 hours a day. In 1847, we have the workday of women and children in factories. They are going to finally limit them to a total of 10 hours a day. Then we have the abolition of slavery. Slavery was banned in Great Britain in 1833. It's going to be banned in the United States in 1865. And later it's going to spread to the colonies of Spain and Portugal. And the last one we need to know is the, fights, the fight for women's rights. We have the Industrial Revolution that inspired women to begin to fight for equal rights. So where they also want their ability to vote, which we know as suffrage. And they also wanted equal pay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it on Standard 9C. You will be taking a quiz on this next class. So make sure um, you glance over this information and glance over some of the other stuff from Standard 9A. And I will see you all on the flip side.